Good afternoon. This is Universal News Media. Today is April 21st, 2018. The videos we will be viewing just came in yesterday from the Federal Aviation Weather Cams in Alaska and Canada. Each frame in these videos is 10 minutes. Today we will see how the dark nebula looks today compared to three months ago in January. The dark nebula can only be seen from the far north. We featured this helium-4 gas cloud in our video on March 23rd. This is what the dark nebula looked like back on January 18th from the south-facing weather cam in Attawa Piscuit, Ontario in Canada. As the sun moves behind the nebula, the landscape suddenly darkens and the sun shrinks to a quarter of its previous size. The light you are watching pass over the front of the nebula is not our sun. This is a tiny light source, an artificial light source, much smaller and less powerful than our sun, positioned close to the earth. It has many different functions. This tiny light source is capable of producing a glare radius that appears very large from our perspective here on the ground. Notice the highly textured background as the light moves back and forth across it. As the light passes to the right, finally, the real sun emerges from behind the dark nebula, the landscape suddenly brightens, and the sun returns to its normal size again. The same thing happens yesterday, April 20th. As the sun moves behind the dark nebula, the landscape suddenly darkens, because the artificial light source is no match for the real sun. The highly textured dark nebula looks similar to how it looked in January with some minor differences. A few key markings on the nebula make it appear to be rotating a little to the left and a little bit downward. Actually, what's more likely is that the Earth has moved higher in relation to the nebula and further to the right of the nebula. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. January 2018 is on the left, and yesterday, April 21st, is on the right. Of course, the sun is higher on the right because we're getting close to summer. One particularly large crevice in the nebula is a telltale sign that we're looking at it from a slightly different angle. I've marked that large crevice with a yellow pen. In January, that same crevice was high and also more to the left than it is now. You can see the difference in the position of the yellow markings. Another observation that we can now see, we can now see more of the nebula on the right side of the screen than we could back in January. Here's a diagram of our possible movement in relation to the nebula and the sun. I'm not an artist, so the brown blob is the nebula, and this is definitely not to scale. This is a very rough sketch of how Earth is moving in relation to the Sun and the dark nebula. Our next video comes from the Southeast Facing Weather Cam in Sandspit, British Columbia in Canada. I was very pleased to see that it is now warm enough in British Columbia for there to be bugs out. The southeast facing weather cam in Uganic Bay, Alaska captured a very large orb that is nearly invisible without some contrast added in order to see it. This area has been particularly heavily chemtrailed daily. Notice how the sky has a milky white appearance. And normally this area of, of Alaska is normally very clear and crisp. I took this picture today of the sun. Notice how the small glare from the artificial light source bends across my finger. Our real sun is there, of course, where it's always been. The only difference is that there is a tiny light source in front of the sun, much closer to the earth. I also took this picture with my very old Samsung phone using 4x zoom. It's very fuzzy looking in the heavily chemtrailed sky. 
For a year or longer, there has been a pink ball to the right of our sun. The reason we know it is not a lens flare is because this pink ball never changes positions. It never moves. No matter how you hold the camera, the pink ball stays in the same place, day after day. Also, it never changes sizes. Here is a close-up view of that pink orb. Back to the picture of the whole sun again. You'll see that the lens flare is below, circled in yellow. The lens flare is a reflection of what the camera sees when it's pointed at our sun. Notice the yellow dot in the center of the sun's lens flare. That was never there years ago. This is something new. This dot is a reflection of the center of the artificial light source I've been describing throughout this video. The enlargement shows that it is covered with lights. When the center of this artificial light source is activated by either an eclipse or a near eclipse, it turns black. This black dot shows up in thousands of these FAA pictures. And as you can see from this photo, taken by the west-facing camera at Point Higgins, the black dot reflects upon water surfaces. This reflection is visible to anyone with or without a camera, proving that it is neither a camera nor a lighting issue, but instead it's an actual piece of equipment. The objects we have just viewed are part of an approaching celestial system. Many people ask when this system will make its closest pass to our Earth. A general indication of time is provided in the following screens of text. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe.